What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Music Theory Logic. My name's Andrew, and today is going to be another Music Theory Breakdown, where we recreate popular songs so that we can make Music Theory a little bit simpler for you to understand. Um, today we're going to talk about Sweater Weather by The Neighborhood. Let's go ahead into the Logic session. So, this is my recreation of Sweater Weather. If you haven't seen these before, I'm not going to play the original audio. I do that since I don't have the copyright um, for said original song. Um, I have recreated every element in the instrumental to the best of my ability. I'm not as concerned about making the mix and instrument selection or um, like reverb tone as any of those elements is on point. I'm more concerned with getting all the notes correct. As long as I get all the notes correct, we can talk about the chords um, and the scale where uh, all these notes come from. This is a pretty interesting track. I'm going to go ahead and play my recreation. If you haven't heard this, you should pause and go listen to the original. Here it is. next. Alright, here's a little breakdown. This would be verse two. I'm gonna jump ahead here. Since this is a repeat of what you've already heard, let's go to the chorus before the bridge. comes the final chorus. Um, cool. I'm just going to stop it there in the interest of time. I want to make this as concise as possible. Um, so I jumped around there. We don't hear the vocals, so hearing the instrumental repeat, it's a little repetitive. Um, didn't mean to use that same word twice in one sentence. Um, all right, cool. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, where these notes come from. This song is in the key of E flat major. E flat has the notes E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, and E flat. That is three black keys, E flat, A flat, and B flat. Um, sounds like every other major scale. That's part of how this music theory stuff uh, works. It's gonna sound like that. Cool, then our chords uh, we get for the first section of the song, we basically find an E flat uh, major chord. That's the one chord. A six chord, that's a C minor, C, E flat, and G. A four chord that is a G B flat D, a G minor chord, um, and then finally the five chord. This is a minor five, so we're in natural minor. This is B flat. Um, excuse me. Um, 
I don't know why I said that. We're, we're in E flat major, so this is the five chord. So let me just say that again. It's a one, six, four, uh, three, four progression. Um, yeah, so sorry, one, six, three, um, five. Cool. Um, super uh, jumbling that. Those chords sound like this. Perfect. Now, if you haven't uh, seen one of these before, or don't haven't like aren't familiar with music theory, basically every chord um, that you see here is what's called a diatonic chord. That means they all of these notes come from the scale you see on the left. This uh, these n chords are made by skipping scale tones. So the first chord is an E flat major, has E flat, G, and B flat. Say for our three chord, we have G, B flat, and D. Um, so again, every chord is made by just skipping scale tones. Cool. Um, then our our bridge chord progression um, brings in one chord that's not in our in our key, which is super cool and part of the reason I chose this track. Uh, we're gonna get a minor six, a C minor, uh, followed by that five chord, B flat major, followed by what we're gonna call a five of five. This is. Uh, in the key of B flat major, but not in the key of um, our E flat major. In um, E flat, our two chord would be a diminished chord, um, but we basically get this chord, which is outside of our key, not a diatonic chord, uh, because we have this rule um, that falls into what are called secondary chords or secondary dominants. A dominant refers to the five chord of any key. This F chord is the five chord of this of this key B flat major um, so that's really how we explain this chord it's also why when we hear it for the first time it really stands out to our ear I think I said it when I was playing the track that's right here um, at 73 when um, everything sort of changes with that F major cool uh, so I'll run through this the verse chord progressions uh, it's right here we're basically doing the one chord, E flat major, followed by um, the five chord, a B flat uh, major, followed by the six minor, so one, five, six. That uh, basically repeats for every verse. Then we get our chorus slash second half of the chorus. I might call it a breakdown, post-chorus, depending upon how we want to structurally call that section. Um, but it basically is the same chord progression. So the chord progression for the chorus, I already had said it, but it's that one, six, three, uh, five. Again, that is a E flat major, C minor, G minor, and B flat major. Cool. Uh, that explains all the chord progressions except for uh, the bridge one. We get this breakdown moment where we hit the F major chord right here. And then we're going to a C minor chord, a B flat, to an F. So again, um, we're still in the key of E flat major. We haven't like fully moved. We are borrowing this chord from uh, this key works um, really well. It almost uh, sounds like in this moment we're in the key of C minor. That makes sense. C minor is what we would say I will call the relative minor of E flat major. So it has the same exact notes. Its tonal center is just around C. So if we played the same scale I showed you in the beginning, starting at C and ending at C with the same notes, we would call that scale C minor. Um, cool. And then finally, we come back to the final chorus. Only this one really crazy thing has happened. The B flat, where we had the five chord, it's now replaced by the five of five, that F major chord. That is really um, an interesting thing and something super cool that uh, I really was the, the reason I wanted to do this song. Something really interesting, still somewhat simple, but uh, gives us some other things to talk about. Cool. Uh, so the main thing you're hearing uh, besides those uh, chords is our bass line, a guitar, and our drums. So let's uh, run through 
what's going on. The guitar, I've said this before, any songs that I did like Wishing Well by Juice World, uh, MIDI controlled guitars just don't sound as good, especially if you can play the guitar, which uh, I love to do. So I played uh, the, the part, but I also charted it into MIDI so that I could show you those notes. Um, so let's, I'll, I'll show them to you first. So this is that E flat, the one that we hit, the note C, then we're doing an arpeggio of the chords. This is um, E flat, G, B flat, G. So that's that one chord um, arpeggiated. Here's uh, that minor three, G, D, G, D. It's really a five chord. And then finally, this is an arpeggio of the five chord, um, which is a C, G, D, B flat. Um, Cool, so I will play that guitar um, because of intonation. I'm not going to play the MIDI at the same time, but we'll watch it. Um, nice, so in reality, that E flat is down. Some of you might have noticed that, it goes up. And that note isn't uh, in the guitar line. Cool, so that's the verse. Then uh, the guitars in the chorus section, the chorus breakdown, do the same chords that I already showed you, basically with the strumming pattern. So the guitar player is playing um, a rhythm here. It's kind of like uh, eighth notes outline it. It's a dotted quarter followed by an eighth note tied to an eighth note and then three eighth notes in a row. That same rhythm happens on all of these chords. Cool, uh, two elements to go for the verse. We've got our drums, luckily for us, it's super simple. We've got uh, eighth note uh, hi-hats, every single eighth note. Um, we've got two eighth notes of a kick in the beginning, then a snare, and then back uh, to the kick. Our snare is a standard backbeat. If you have my music theory text, which I'll link to below, I call it standard backbeat, and people that talk about drums call standard backbeat to be a snare that's hitting on the two and four. So this is just what we would expect in a basic uh, sort of groove. Um, one interesting thing about this song is that we have like the indie um, alternative elements like the guitars and the way the vocal sounds, but then we have uh, the drums, which really sound like a drum machine, which give this song kind of a unique feel to it. Um, so then finally we have a, uh, a kick drum that happens on um, the same notes from the guitar rhythm I was showing you, which is a dotted quarter followed by an eighth note. And then finally, at the end of this four bar phrase, we get um, the two last up beats. So the and after three and the and after four. And then all of this uh, repeats. So in the moment when between the end of the end of the four measures to when it repeats. We're gonna hear three kick drums in a row. It stands out a lot. Let's just hear those uh, drums on their own. With that guitar. Cool, um, getting there. So the last thing to talk about is our bass line uh, for the verse that is. So our bass line is basically, uh, sorry for uh, using that word, outlining the root notes, super standard. Um, we get some interesting rhythms happening. So four eighth notes in a row on the one, that's the E flat. Uh, then the five chord, which we get uh, in this measure, we're on the B flat for that dotted quarter followed by an eighth note. Uh, then finally we get C, C, and then we walk down our scale, B flat, A, G, E flat. Now technically this note is out of key, we want an E flat, um, but we could think of that note is in our final F major chord that we talked about, so um, 
And it's also such a fast passing tone that it doesn't really sound out of key, but this part does feel somewhat chromatic. Let's uh, listen to all of these elements. We'll watch the bass. Here's that B flat, the walk down. Cool, then on the chorus, the first section, um, we the bass is doing an arpeggio run essentially of that one F G G All right so those notes are E flat E flat up to G up to C that uh, is in our chord of the moment of that measure we go down to an F we get G twice um up to B flat, and then we get this steady quarter note run, a B flat, G, B flat, G. These two notes aren't in the chord of the moment, they're in our key, um, but these two notes are in our main chord that's happening there, the B flat major. Uh, cool. Then our breakdown section, which is kind of like our chorus, just the second half of the chorus, um, the bass is doing the root notes again um, with a similar, the same run at the very end, only we're filling in the notes from the chords. So E flat, C, G, back to C, and the B flat walk down. Um, cool. And that uh, happens again. So finally, that covers all of the bass. So we just saw the chorus or the verse bass line the first half of the chorus, the second half of the chorus. Uh, it goes back to the same verse bass line, the same ones I just showed you for the choruses. Uh, then for the breakdown, the bridge, we don't get bass. When the bass comes back, it's playing the same chorus line. Now this is one of the interesting things. We have a new chord here at the end, but this still works, perhaps because we're hitting that A note that I mentioned uh, just uh, a little bit ago. Um, and perhaps it's because we're landing on a C and we find that note in our actual um, F chord at the end as well. Um, cool. The final two elements um, that I will address is in the choruses, we get this like weird synth analog pad sound. I'm using Starlight Vox, just a default logic instrument. It's uh, playing notes from the chord, nothing crazy here. It's uh, playing a G. That's the three from our, our one chord. It's playing the root note of the chord we're playing here, the six. It's playing uh, the root note of our minor three that we're playing, and it's playing the root note of the B flat. Interesting thing is just that it doesn't start on the root note, which gives it a cool harmony. Again, that's an example of an instrument that I did not uh, get perfectly sonically to the original, although it fits in my mind what that instrument in the original is doing, which is again an analog uh, synth that is uh, really just providing an extra layer in the background. Um, cool, I have uh, the guitar rhythm that I mentioned recorded in addition to whole notes, so just holding those out. Um, let's look at the drums for the chorus. So the first section is basically the same thing. We are, These two elements are doing the same thing. Our snare is on a standard backbeat. Our cymbals are the straight eighth notes again. We um, get this shaker sound on quarter notes. So it's on one, two, three, and four. And then finally our kick is slightly spaced out. So where we were doing the two kick drums, the first... Uh, eight measures of this chorus uh, we get so if we want to call it a pre-chorus or the actual chorus whatever we want to call the section um, we basically get the same thing kick drum slightly changed and the shaker added then we come to what is really the chorus uh, kind of a broken down version of it the first time we hear it Basically, we get this theme of uh, the eighth notes. Uh, it's kick, kick, snare, kick, all on eighth notes. Uh, the snare is a standard backbeat still. The second uh, measure, we get the clap added to the snare, 
we don't get a kick drum there. And then finally, we're doing the shaker on the two eighth notes, one and right in the beginning. Um, one and. Right here again. One and. One and. Um, cool. So uh, that, I believe, covers all of our elements for this part of the song. So that is everything up to the bridge. Now, right when we hear this F major, that gears our ears up uh, for something new to happen. We haven't heard that chord before, and that chord isn't actually in our key. Once again, we explain that one by calling it a secondary dominant. It is in the key of one of our other chords we're using. Um, once we hear that F major, everything changes. The chord progression I already showed you is doing that C minor, B flat major down to F major. The uh, guitar is strumming those same chords with a rhythm. Um, in the song, I played this. Uh, this is, it just felt so empty in the bridge and it's, uh, the singer is just singing like O's at this section. So I charted the melody in. It's going uh, D, E, flat, D, so that's 7, 1, 7, uh, D, E, flat, D, B, flat, D, B, flat, A. Um, all of those notes are in our, in our key except for this A, but again, in this moment, we uh, have the F major, so that note is actually more correct than the A flat uh, because that note's in our chord we're using. Uh, cool. Then uh, the final thing that we have added to this song is at the very end or over the last chorus. Super subtly in the background, we hear what I'm using as a glass marimba soft from Logic. It's a, sort of a glass sounding pitched percussion instrument. It's a really subtle. Those notes are uh, it's doing steady quarter notes the whole time. It's going E flat, E flat, G, G. Those are from our chord. Down to uh, D, 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 D. This is an interesting one because we're using a C minor there. So that makes that really a minor ninth, which is kind of cool. Music theory uh, terminology. So that note's not in our chord. It's in our key, um, which makes it interesting. Then uh, finally, we get... F uh, down to E flat. All these notes are in our in our key, um, and then finally down to D, ending on the seven. That's a uh, kind of interesting. What's also interesting about the D is that it's not in the chord at that moment. We're playing an F major chord here in the chorus, so F major is F A C. This D note is not one of those three letters I just mentioned. Um, so the way that we would explain that is by calling it an ad additional added note, um, the harmony against an F, that is basically a sixth of it. So the, the fifth is a C. So it would be the sound of it, like a suspended sixth harmony. Um, cool. So that covers every element of the song. Wait, not quite. Um, the main thing, I can't believe I almost forgot about this. One of the other really cool things about this song is that not only do we get this new chord that's out of key at the bridge but after that the the song really changes and one of the big things that makes the song change is the drum groove so this entire time on the left we've heard standard backbeat what that means is the snare is on beat two and four this is kind of going to show you exactly what i was talking about in the drum section of the textbook but um, a lot of this stuff is the same in terms of the, the kick drum. We don't have as many cymbals um, happening. But the biggest thing that changes is that the snare is now halftime. It's on beat three instead of beat two and four. This makes everything feel different. Uh, we're doing the shaker and a closed cymbal on beat uh, two and four. And then finally... Uh, measure two, we get an extra kick drum on the last four. That happens on measure three as well. And then four and one are identical. Let's watch those drums.
Um, cool. So again, that four bar phrase uh, continues in the drums. So I'm not going to keep playing it. Uh, but the main thing that changes are, I guess everything does change, but our cymbals were all hitting this rhythm before. They're just hitting not as many of the other ones. Uh, our kick was hitting this rhythm before, but what really makes this change how it feels is the snare being on beat three. Here's a little side assignment I, uh, I have for you. Take any song that you are working on or any beat you're making, and if you have a standard backbeat, the snare on two and four, try moving it to beat three. Vice versa, if it's on beat three, try moving it to beat two and four. You're going to notice that the entire feeling of everything changes. That just um, demonstrates the importance of that backbeat or our snare clap element in popular music. Cool. So hopefully you found this all helpful. Once again, we looked at Sweater Weather by The Neighborhood. We saw Secondary Dominance, which is a cool um, compositional technique I haven't seen in a song I've covered for the channel yet. That was the F major. We also saw um, E flat major and a pretty standard chord progression for that. Uh, so hopefully you found this helpful. If you found this video helpful, you would help me out a lot by subscribing to the channel, hitting the bell for notifications so you find out when I do a new video. And uh, we'll be coming out with a lot of content. We drop these music theory breakdowns every Friday. I drop an additional piece of content on Tuesdays, sometimes Wish I News, where I rant about random uh, music experiences or lessons I wish I knew before I, or 10 years ago in my career. And uh, I sometimes cover different production techniques. So anyway, if you're making music, I'd love to check out some of your music. You can feel free to leave it in the comments. Have a beautiful day, and I will see you guys next time. Cheers.